some sunshine, but look at that wind. You see there, that's the tassels of the chestnut that are just about to come into flower. This is an early tree, so I'm not particularly worried. But that's the start of it. So I reckon that'll be in flower in about a week and a half to two weeks. There's a lime tree. There's the flowers. Late this year, this one flowers really well as well. But it's still not in flower. And this is the first sunshine we've had in about four days. And for the last week and a half, since I kind of did my last video, we have heard no temperatures. The bees are all still starving. There's no nectar coming in. There is really, it's been like really quiet. It's been, we've been stuck in like a groundhog day. All I've been doing is trying to pull the last of the bit of honey that I have, working out whether it's worth pulling it or not. The problem with pulling honey is at this particular point, if I pull it, they might starve. But if I don't pull it, it crystallizes in top of the frames. So they're happy to spend a little bit of time working on it to get it out if they need it. But the problem is I know that as soon as the flow does start, they'll just ignore it and put honey back on top of it. And that's the problem. So this is just a short video to just update you guys. I haven't been doing really any actual much beekeeping apart from a bit of pulling honey. Um, I've got a lot of work to do in the apiaries. Uh, I'll put the camera down now because I'm sure you're all sick of me making you seasick. Anyway, I've been feeding. As you know, as you saw, that's nearly empty, that first one. So a lot of syrup has gone out, uh, nearly 900 kilos which is a lot of syrup. And I've been feeding with Happy Floor, which is the one I told you I'd bought. So, um, nothing really much more to say, other than the fact that most of my colonies are queen right. So if we do get a good flow in the summer, so we've got, don't forget, we've got chestnut and bramble that are about to start in about two weeks, as I just said. Uh, and that'll last a month because we've had some moisture, we've got moisture in the ground, I think it will last quite well. It just depends on what the temperatures are. When I started beekeeping quite a while ago now, I never really worried about the flows, I never really worried about what was coming, the forecasts, and now I do worry because it's critical. But perhaps I get too involved in that and spend too long worrying about what might happen and not concentrating on the what will happen. So, in other words, putting things into place according to what's actually happened, not what might happen. I think we can all be dreamers, but there's only so much you can dream about what you want to happen. The reality is you have to act on what is actually happening. And what is actually happening at the moment is lots of feed, colonies not doing much, stagnating. And just no sunshine. I mean, if you're feeding and colonies are getting feed, there's loads of pollen coming in, as I always maintain this time of year. There's still a lot of pollen, which is great. But if there's nothing, no carbohydrates to support that growth of the protein going into the, into the larvae and all that kind of thing to feed those larvae and to bring up the bees, if there's no sugar going into that, it's a waste of time. So you've got to remember that probably most of my colonies are literally stagnating or, or going backwards other than the ones I've fed. So I've just been digging in, just getting, I've had actually, actually as much as there's not been much to do at the moment, then there is loads to do in the apiaries, but I haven't really been able to get into the bees because it's been so cold and windy all the time. I have had a lot of work going on with this place behind me. So you remember I talked about the mezzanine, the electrical work, the division of the rooms to form all the components of the extraction room, 
the resin on the floor, and then the heat pump, that has now all gone off to the commission for grant. Finally, we're moving forward with that. I wasn't able to proceed with that because I was waiting for final quotes. Now the final quote came in for the heat pump, which will work all the underfloor heating that goes from there right the way down. And also that corner as well. So you've got the warming room over there and you've got the heat pump that will power this is the extraction room. That's this component here. There's three bays in the extraction room. Have you seen before? I keep showing this off because I think it's rather sexy. And there's also one unit over there for that area. So at the moment, the quote covers division of all the rooms after the mezzanine is up and the mezzanine is pretty huge. Here's a picture of the mezzanine. I'm just so excited about this. This is going to be like groundbreaking. And what we've done is we've actually brought the mezzanine very slightly away from the wall on this side and the rear side so that we can use metal plates that bolt into the mezzanine. That means the frame comes slightly inside, but we can put all the division and the, we call it pano sandwich, but the, it's like plastic uh, insulation that is white on both sides, like you see in hospitals and stuff like that. That can then fit directly next to the beams over there. So we get a really good finish in and around each beam. And that's all in the quote. So the finish, the end result, will be a really tidy room. You'll have the supports of the mezzanine on the inside of the extraction room, but on the outside, it'll all look clean and smooth walls, which gives me room outside also to put things against, like tables and stuff. And also included in the quote is some big stainless steel tables, a trolley, uh, a wheel around trolley with three shelves, a big 2.5 meters, 2.4 meters sink, and all of those tables and sink have got a rack underneath as well for extra support. And also uh, in the extraction room, I've got uh, four lots of two shelvings at two meters. So that's eight meters of shelving, which is gonna be really good. So they all look pretty amazing to be honest when it's done. And I think we're gonna get it. I think we're gonna win that grant because there's a sum of money in Europe that is available. And if you present the right grant, they're gonna help you out. And this is all about rural development. I'm developing what I've got now into an area that's sterile, that, is, that enables me to put in honey into pots cleanly and hopefully enter a bigger market. So it's all really exciting. I know this has gone on for ages. I know we're supposed to be in here by now extracting, but you know what? Things don't always work out how you want to. And as I said before, how you think it's going to work out and how it actually works out are two completely different things. But it doesn't matter because everything's in play for it to eventually work out. And you know what they say about life? Unless you have knockbacks, you're never going to build the best way forward. And because it's taken time to get all this together, it's actually helped me. So when you have your projects and you're really perturbed by how long it takes and you and I know yes you're dealing with idiots and artisans don't get back to you with quotes and when they do it's a ridiculous price there's always a reason for that and if you find a quote from somebody that you think is ridiculous just find another one that's all you have to do there's no point in moaning about it when you go to someone can you give me your best price that is their best price and if they've got too much work on go somewhere else I've learned a lot over this journey, and one of the things I've learned is that some people uh, treat you terribly no matter who they are, it's just business. That's what you gotta remember. Business is business. So, just a bit reflective this morning. I'm off now to cut grass with my grass cutter. Not this one, that's for the garden. This one here, off out to the apiaries. This is really good machine. And I'm so lucky to be able to stock this inside for the moment because it's always dry, always just ready to connect up and off we go. So I've got two of my main apiaries to cut. The one that I have moved inside to much further over in the apiary, that one needs to be cut. There's quite a lot of grass to do, but it's all the right height. Uh, the strimming's been done, so I'm just gonna get that done. Um, and then we will be kind of tidy so when the flow does start and i start um dividing colonies because that's the next thing on the horizon those racks of sort of 
uh, nukes up there will be coming down. They'll all be outside, spread out, cleaned out, pressure washed off, the inside bleached. And that's the job I've got to do now. That's my main job coming up is to get all those ready for the nuke season. So I was going to, as I said in my previous video, I was going to do spring splits, but the spring was diabolical. And I didn't think, to be honest, that the colonies were up to it. And I've spoken to a lot of other people and I followed people on X, on uh, which is Twitter, on um, Instagram. And man, they're all like saying, I wish I just never bothered the spring. And I'm not saying I told you so, <laughs> but, but I've done that before where I've grafted really early and it's all gone completely pear shaped. And sometimes you're better off just being a little bit hesitant. And I reckon I've saved myself a lot of work, a lot of time and a lot of feed, which I've had to use elsewhere anyway on just maintaining my colonies. Because you imagine if I'd have fed all those nukes, okay, I would have taken the workload off my production colonies a little bit because they would have lost some bees, but I still would have had to fed the production colonies probably as much as well as the nukes. So you've got to kind of do this kind of juggling around and it's that I'm afraid all the time. So off out to cut apiaries. That'll be today gone and done before you know it. Um, and I'm waiting till next Monday because next Monday we get the next uh, notification of grants. Everything is done online now. And that's why I've employed someone to do it. And you know what they say, you've got to pay a bit to get a bit. And I'm so glad I paid a bit because as much as it seemed expensive at the time, the amount of work that person's had to do on my behalf is absolutely massive and I can trust them. And I know that everything's been done properly. With this kind of thing, you can't just chuck it to them and say, oh, it's that. We live in a society now where everything has to be dot the I's, cross the T's and in triplicate and signed and everything needs to be justified, which is what I've had to do. And that's what's taken so long. It's like, you know what they say about France, it's just full of paperwork and that's what it is. Sorry, let's get out and cut this grass. Well, that's one apiary done. That's the entry there. And you can see the size of it and the height of the grass that was. And you can hear the wind in the trees. Some sunshine though, the bees are over there now. This is where I walk the apiary over there, walk the bees to it. But I can drive right either this side, right around that tree, or right through the middle here, which is what I'm going to be the Norman Passage. The guy who owns the land will do the main areas with his uh, machine, but I obviously do round the bees and create some access for everybody. That way I feel I'm doing my bit but grass is growing really well. As we know, we've had a lot of on and off rain all spring. On to the next one. Catch you again soon. Take care. Bye for now.